So, you have purchased some miniatures and they all have cloaks on, and you're not sure how to tackle them. In this video, I'm going to show you three similar ways with different color combinations so you can get your troops looking great on the battlefield. Let's go! For our cloaks today, we will be using a three color system. As shown here, we have three shades of reds, and they go progressively darker from left to right. The premise of this is the darker color on the left will be our base color, the paint in the middle will be our mid-tone, this will be the main color you'll see on the cloaks once finished. Finally, our paint on the right will be our highlighting color. So that being said, let's start with the first cloak, the red one. Our elf miniature was sprayed today with Games Workshop's Retributor Armor Gold Spray, as the majority of the miniature will be in gold armor. And the cloak was first painted with Army Painter Vampire Red. As you can see, I am not too bothered about getting this red onto other parts of the miniature, such as the bow or quiver, as I would paint over this with another colour later on anyway. But for this video today, we are just concentrating on the cloaks. And if you would like me to make a how to paint how it is elf video, then do let me know. A couple layers were painted for all of our cloaks today, just to ensure better coverage for our base colour. Now our main brush of the day, a makeup brush. I love using these as they are super soft, give good coverage and are able to blend colours nicely. And on top of that, you can paint quickly, which is great if you want to batch paint some troops and get them done for that game that you planned for the weekend. So we are going to put a small amount of paint onto the brush tip. However, my main tip here is, is to not use a tissue to take off the unwanted paint because these little tissue strands get caught up in the bristles and they end up non-delightfully on your miniature as you paint. So I would suggest to use a sponge instead. Here I used a kitchen scouring pad. We are now going to blend our mid-tone colour of pure red onto the cloak. Firstly, I will show you on my hand what effect this will have and how thin the layer will be. In a circular motion, go over the cloak and you will see the paint start to deposit on the upper areas, leaving our base coat colour to still be seen in the recesses for our shadows. To add some further darker areas to the cloth, we will use a red tone shade paint. This was slightly diluted with water and applied into the shaded areas. As this shade paint takes a while to dry, you can easily paint a large batch. For example, 20 miniatures, and then get a cup of tea. And once you have returned, they will be dry for the next stage. Finally, Mars Red was painted on as the highlights using a thin brush. Only one highlight was necessary here as the end results look good enough for a gaming table. If you wanted to go further, you could make the shadows even darker by mixing some matte black with some quick shade mixing medium and then applying this into some of the recesses, which are slightly deeper. This will make our highlight on our previous stage stand out a bit more, compared to the darker recesses. I do enjoy painting cloaks and robes now, as it wasn't my favourite thing to do when I first started painting. And if you have any requests for other cloak colours, then comment below and I could make a future video for you. So that's one method, now on to the next. Our purple cloak. This is a colour I did recently and I really enjoyed the outcome of it, as I don't paint purple too often. Which brings me to my next point. With some paints, if you don't use them that often, just be sure to give them an extra shake beforehand, as they do tend to separate a little and the outcome will give you a slightly glossy finish, which is not too ideal for what we need. And this happened here. But for this video and my viewers, I totally meant to do this to show you rolls eyes off screen. Once we have added a second layer and this base coat has dried to a non-glossy finish, we can add our mid-tone colour using our makeup brush, and for this we used Wasteland Soil. The same method of applying the paint by going around in circles was done to layer up the colour. If we go straight in an up and down motion, we could potentially get this paint in the darker recesses, and we do not want that here. Now, to get a highlighted look to the cloaks such as these ones I prepared earlier, 
we can use our final lighter colour and apply the highlights just like we did on our red cloak. However, for our second method of the day, we will use our makeup brush again and apply the paint to create a lighter look on the cloak. To do this, we won't apply as much pressure whilst holding the brush and simply let it glide over the miniature. This will naturally hit the top surface and create those highlights and also create a nice blend to the cloak. Importantly, you can see this method again is quick to do, which is what I love, my precious. And if you can save time here and there on one miniature, imagine how much time you would say, say, painting 20 in one go. Now this would be good for the tabletop. However, if you wanted to go further, then use the same paint or indeed something a little bit lighter and apply some highlights to the upper sections of the cloak. This could be quite nice for characters, for example, as hopefully they would stay on the battlefield the longest, especially if you have taken more time to paint them. So that's two methods down, and here is the third. And we will paint a white cloak for this. In order to paint a white cloak, we will be painting it grey first. Makes sense, right? The theory of this is that the darker grey will sit in the shaded areas within the folds of the cloth and this will trick the eye into thinking that our pale, lighter colours are in fact a shade of white. So we will start by painting on some ash grey. And just for fun, our makeup brush was used to show how well it can base coat miniatures quickly with its larger surface area. These brushes are quite versatile and can be used for so many things. And I will leave a link to them below if you want to check them out. And our smaller brush was used to paint the hard to reach areas for our larger brush. A useful Chris tip here, you will hear me say many times on videos to thin your paints and I will show you why now. For example, if you have too much paint on your brush and apply it to a miniature, then it can clog up the details like so. If this occurs, then simply take off the paint with a brush and place it back on your palette before it has a chance to dry. But to prevent this in the first place, a little water can be used to thin a paint slightly before brushing it onto a miniature. Undoubtedly, you will get used to it as you paint more and more and become more comfortable with a paint range. Using our trusty makeup brush again, we will apply our mid-tone colour of Spaceship Exterior, in the same way as the other two cloaks. For this third method, we are going to enhance the shadows by painting a darker grey. So, by adding a small dot of dungeon grey to our palette and combining it with a larger amount of quick shade mixing medium, we can effectively create a shade paint, or a wash for you Citadel users. This was applied just into the recesses of our cloak. Remember, we are fooling the eye by having darker shadows here compared to the brighter colours of the folds for the cloth. And for our brighter areas, a small amount of matte white was mixed into our spaceship exterior to create a lighter grey. And this was applied to the top surface using a makeup brush. For the tabletop, this would be great. But if you wish to go a bit further, then you could use a smaller brush and apply another layer of this mix to some of the prominent folds of our cloth, like so. Our three cloaks are looking good and you can certainly see that these makeup brushes do have a use in our hobby. And my question of the day is, which method are you going to try from today's video and on what miniatures? This video was based on a question that was sent to me from a viewer. And if you have any requests or ideas, then do let me know. If you have found value in the video today, then please do prod that like button as it will help the channel grow and reach more hobbyists just like you and maybe tell a friend if they would find these videos useful. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on hobbying.